So when my wife Kirsten and I first moved to Kelowna, we lived about, uh, oh, about 18 minutes outside of town on the south end of Lakeshore. And sometimes when I was driving to work, I would get behind this guy driving a Porsche. How many of you own a Porsche? <laughs> so the beautiful Carrera. And I don't know the different models, but I knew it was a Carrera. I knew it was really expensive. And it was gorgeous. I mean, it was wide. The tires were huge. And as I'm driving behind him, I'm thinking to myself, man, if I took all four of my Subaru tires and lined them up, one of his was wider than all four of mine. And the paint on it was this deep blue, you know, it's, it, Porsche paint is a, is a gorgeous, like it's like 25 layers of lacquer. It's like, it's not like Lada blue, it's, it's Porsche blue. <laughs> and, and, and this is the feature I love the best. Here's this feature, is that when he accelerated, a spoiler would come out of nowhere, right in the back of the car. The spoiler would appear, and, and as we're going through the school zone, it would just grip him to the road, and then when he slowed down, it would disappear again. Like, this is an amazing car. And I'm following him to work, and I'm thinking to myself, man, tires like that on the back of my Subaru, a spoiler going up and down? That would look so cool. But here's my question. As I'm watching this guy drive this car, what do you think I am making up about the kind of guy that would drive that car? What am I thinking? Rich, that's generous. Do you know what the first thing that came to mind was? Short. And then it went from there. I just started making up stories. So first of all, it was short and illegal. Like what is he doing that's illegal? So I'm thinking, okay, nobody that works hard like me buys a car like that, because we drive what? Subarus. <laughs> so what is it? He's in Kelowna. What is it that's illegal? Okay, it's got to be one of two things. It's got to be either drugs or real estate. No, both. That's it. He sells drug houses. Okay, so it's a short realtor selling drug houses. And maybe you've done this. Like, then I would actually come home and tell my wife that's who I saw. <laughs> Oh yeah, I saw that short realtor again, you know the guy with the Porsche, as if I know him. <laughs> and, and then, one day, an amazing miracle happens. And I'm going home on my mountain bike and I come to this four-way intersection, I stop and I'm waiting for the traffic to clear. And I look across, there is Mr. Porsche. Spoiler down. <laughs> an amazing moment happens. We're both waiting and I look across and he looks across at exactly the same moment and we make eye contact. <laughs> and he gives me one of those, well, we are like this. Like I am thinking, I mean, what a nice guy. He gave me the Porsche wave thing there, I think. And suddenly I am thinking, maybe we know a lot of the same people, you know, we have a lot in common. So I'm, I'm thinking maybe he'll have me over for a barbecue this weekend, you know, lend me the keys. Like, so have you ever done this? It's like you make up this whole story, right? And then you actually meet the person or you have this interaction and suddenly it completely changes. Well, here's what's going on. So what I call it is your window on the world. So we have this framework that we look through and we believe it's true. And this framework is made up, of course, of judgments. So these are stories I tell myself that probably I made up in a moment. You know, Malcolm Gladwell's book Blink is all about this, how immediately we make up these stories. And it's also made up of our values. So we have, you know, things like uh, early bird gets the worm, money doesn't grow on trees, don't cry over spilt milk. I mean, all of these little things that we were told as kids, somehow they still get repeated in our brain and they still actually influence our actions. And then, of course, we have our assumptions, our guesses, and then, of course, we have our history.